What is a legal scam that is still happening in 2022? If you're a personal business owner, you may receive what looks to be a bill in your mail from the US Domain Authority. At first glance, you're under the impression that you need to pay $289 to renew your website domain name. However, there is very fine print stating that you are not legally required to pay the listed amount. It's actually an ad requesting you pay that amount in order to have your website listed on the US Domain Authority site. I can't imagine how many people have been tricked by this. Read your mail carefully. Extended warranties, so many promises made, but when time comes for a claim, almost all are denied. That news in America is entertainment. Can get away with saying pretty much anything and still call it news. Title pawns, payday loans some charging 300% interest. Insider trading within Congress. But if we do it, we end up in prison. Look, op, if you want to get in on some legal scam, you have to do your own research. That's why I recommend you buy my book, asterisk asterisk what you can do to legally become rich in 12 easy lessons asterisk. Just 24 easy payments of $199.99 and you will have the secrets to being a millionaire unveiled right before your eyes. Private prisons. You're telling me that they charge the government for the beds and the taxpayers still got to foot the bill if those beds are empty so the company running it doesn't lose money. Fuck you. Paying services charges I don't mind paying a $10 delivery fee but will not pay a 99 cent service charge. Civil forfeiture. You're going to tell me that a cop thinks that my property might be used for illegal activity, and that cop is going to steal it from me and pad the department's bottom line. What the actual F? The troubled teen industry. It doesn't work. It traumatizes children. It's legal kidnapping. I hope more attention comes to it and something happens. They're a business and the goal is to make money, not help troubled teenagers. FFs, half the time the kids aren't even troubled. ETA. Asterisk the troubled teen industry refers to for-profit organizations aimed at steering rebellious and at-risk youth onto a better path through reform camps. But their methods are tough love, negative, positive punishments and physical labor. Because it's a business meant to make money, a lot of corner cutting happens. They hire young and untrained staff for less pay rather than therapists and certified nurses and teachers. It's also not regulated at all so they can effectively do whatever they want with little recourse. They use scared straight tactics and beat kids into obedience. They claim the best way to send a kid there is by surprise, so they don't try and run beforehand, aka burst into their room at 2 a.m. and drag them into a van with very few belongings. Look up a LAN school for a notorious one. Paris Hilton was kidnapped at 2 a.m. and sent to Provo Canyon when she was 16. Look at how well that worked. Go through this thread for some horror stories. Edit 2. Asterisk thank you to everyone who clarified the difference between reinforcement and punishment. I've been using the terms interchangeably. Ticketmaster. WTF is a handling fee when I am the one handling my own phone. Edit. I was just making a flip smart ass answer to the scam question. I had no idea it was this much of a problem. LOL. Paying convenience charges when booking tickets online. Time shares. I figured Airbnb and VRBO and all the other temp rental disruptors would have put a stop to this predatory own little pay mucho cash grab which destroys local housing markets and creates wet paint ghost towns. But alas it persists and we have to stare at lines of cheap shacks or Soviet block style complexes left vacant on off seasons or occupied by flightless grey birds who only fly south because some Iowa idiot got conned in a Ramada Inn on a Tuesday looking for a free golf bag. Arguably these apps have created more of a problem but I figured it'd be better. Having to file your own taxes then being fined if you don't do it right edit. As many pointed out the IRS doesn't know all of it but they know enough for the average person. Companies shouldn't be allowed to lobby to keep the process convoluted and there shouldn't be such a large industry around tax prep. Congress being able to pick stocks. This link while regular people can't, either because of the industry they're in or because their 401k is just some mutual fund with high fees. The most powerful people in our country, legislators, can play with the stock market as they please. Doesn't matter how much inside information they have. Congress officials being allowed to trade stocks. Charging for parking in hospitals and clinics. Also charging people money to withdraw money or because they have small, positive, balances in their bank accounts. 
charging huge fees for parking permits without spending any of that money on the maintenance of those parking spots. My kid's school charges a $3 internet fee if you want to refill their cafeteria cards via the website. If you do it in person there's no fee if they feel they have to charge a fee shouldn't it be the other way around since if you use their website you aren't taking up anyone's time. Insurance covering less because you have dual insurance. Medication costs my dog had hookworm and so my doctor recommended I get treated as well just to be safe. Pharmacy called me warning that it would cost me $2,995. Asked my doctor if there was an alternative was able to get an equally effective treatment for $45. Cable company making you rent a router for $10 a month. Shit should be illegal. Sadly overplayed, but health insurance. Just yesterday there was a post about a guy who had medically necessary surgery and the insurance didn't want to pay the hospital. I'm not sure if there's an actual name for it, but the practice of banks where they prioritize your automatic payments in order of highest to lowest so that you're more likely to overdraw earlier, and then they can slap on the overdrawn fees for each consecutive payment that attempts to go through. For example, you have $600 in your account and have six automatic payments coming out. They prioritize the $400 loan payment first, then the $120 car insurance, then 50 internet, 50 cell phone, 50 utilities, 50 renters insurance. You now owe $90 in overdrawn fees, are late on three bills, and are mostly broke. If they'd have prioritized the last five first, then the loan payment, you'd have $280 left, a bill you're late on, and $30 in overdrawn fees. It's so fucking scummy. Why insurance goes up after an incident? The fact that you give regular monthly installments is the intent that they will save you the hassle in case of a problem. Extended warranties on vehicles. Good luck getting them to pay. If debt collectors can trick a grieving person into uttering words that imply you take responsibility for your dead relative's debts, that can be treated as a binding oral contract and allow them to collect from you edit. I've gotten a lot of replies saying this is unenforceable in pretty much any jurisdiction. They just make you believe that's the case so they can increase the pressure for you to pay. Don't give them a dime and go talk to a lawyer. You should do that anyway before following legal advice from someone who may not even be in your country. Insane rent prices for houses even squatters wouldn't stay at. 80 plus hour work weeks for understaffed tourism towns around the world. University fees. I have to not only pay for my classes and admin fees, I have to pay for two separate student union fees, a technology fee, an online processing fee, and a recreation and athletic fee, despite the field house being entirely closed due to COVID. I'm too late for this to be seen probably but I'll post it anyway. I once accidentally clicked something on the internet and unbeknownst to me signed up to some crappy subscription for £15 a month. The subscription was basically a monthly spam email about something uninteresting that went unnoticed. It was somewhere between 6 to 12 months before I noticed I was paying this company money as I thought it was my Wi-Fi bill showing up on my direct debit record. I googled the company name, it was a company in Macclesfield or Mansfield if I remember correctly. Straight away the reviews were all saying it's a scam, hard to cancel the direct debit etc phoned my bank who informed me the company was known to them but had always stayed within the law and I'd be extremely lucky to get any money refunded. Bank also said that I needed the company to stop the subscription as they couldn't do it. I found the customer service number for this company, straight away was told by the automated voice lady that it was £1 something a minute to be on the phone to them which infuriated me as I was having to pay even more money to get them to stop scamming me. Anyway I got put on hold after a minute or so of ringing. The icing on the cake was the on-hold song was The Streets, Dry Your Eyes Mate. At that point I laughed to myself and applauded their sheer cheek. I got played well. Edit. Spelling. Health insurance. My parents went to get some prescriptions the other day. With insurance $250, without insurance $160. Politicians and their families investing in the stock market. MLMs. No. Karen, you are not going to be a millionaire with your shitty products. Praise the good god Amway. Purveyor of fine essential oils and blankets. Health insurance in America. I spend $600 a month to cover myself and my son and have never walked into a medical appointment without a $200 to $300 bill showing up in the mail. 
it seems since I can, afford, insurance then I get charged more for services after the insurance company, negotiates, prices down. I'm a single father making 15 per hour. Insurance is more than rent and my car payment combined. USA tax paying system. Paraphrasing, we know how much you owe, but we want you to calculate it and you have to get it correct under pain of prison or paying too much. Oh and the whole process is more complicated than it needs to be because of private interests. The housing market. So many corporations are buying up houses and then jacking up rent. Construction and real estate industries. And then you have builders that build small, cheap, units that won't stand the test of time because corners are being cut. And real estate agents trying to line their own pockets with bidding wars and creating a sense of scarcity and urgency. I used to go to the ticket gate to get tickets, to circumvent the fee, but now the ticket office is only open when another concert is going on. It really pisses me off. I'm looking at a downtown concert in the summer, and hoping that their ticket office actually has predictable hours. Kenneth Copeland and his kill fleecing their congregation for millions for private jets and Satan knows what else. News, which isn't useful or objectively true, and therefore not news but propaganda. America's privately owned prison system which is a hub for modern day slavery. Payday lenders to why Soprano wouldn't have stooped so low. College textbooks. We updated a figure in chapter 8 and changed the page numbers for 3 third edition. It costs $180. Legally required, but not federally provided, insurance. Like 90% of all crypto companies out there. Buy ETH through us and guarantee a return. They are all either pump and dump, or pyramid schemes. Automatic tipping at fast food places. I mean I get leaving a tip at a sit-down restaurant where a waiter or waitress is taking care of you. But if I go to Chipotle and get a bowl and they automatically add a 20% tip, that's a lot of money. I might consider a tip if they could add cheese last so the guac doesn't stick to the lid. Big oof. Edit. Formatting. The PS5 collectors are still just grabbing as many as they can and making sure to sell them at a massive upcharge. This has been going on since the PS5 went onto shelves. Not being able to vote where our tax dollars go. Using tax dollars to pay thousands of politicians around the country when all they do is get paid six figures, live in glorious mansions, drive sick cars, and argue all day and get nothing done. Senate being able to trade on insider information. Funeral homes. Or to specify for the dunces among us, unethical funeral homes chasing profit at the expense of bereaved people. The amount of leeching done to grieving people just boils my blood. Convincing people if they don't give 10% of their money to rich ass churches, they will burn in hell. Lobbyist buying our representatives. Universities charging extremely high tuition fees, students being indebted for the rest of their life simply because they want to do the right thing and study, so they can be a valuable member of the workforce in society. Working for the current minimum wage. I just want it to have kept up with inflation. That is probably around 22.5 per hour IIRC. The hardest jobs I've ever had was my lowest paying job. Healthcare in the USA. When you work at a hospital and see the fuckery that happens you get even more mad. Student debt in its current state. I know physicians who can't pay those loans off because the interest is just too high. They've been paying for 10 years and still have their original principal loan amount. Those are just three things that make me the most mad right now. American restaurants forcing the burden of employee wages onto their customers. Estate agents, they charge you thousands to open a door to a house so you can look around it in a couple of emails. Entering your contact info on any website. They can track and contact you with only keystrokes. You should never enter your shit online, unless you know the site is secured. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and liking. Any feedback in the comments would be greatly appreciated so that we can make these videos even better. Thanks for watching Upvote Stories.